What is going on guys, it is Lofi, and in my last video I mentioned the term gaming being slapped on everything these days. So there's one question that a lot of customers ask me, and that is, what is the actual difference between a gaming mouse and a non-gaming mouse? And is there any difference at all? So, let's talk about that a little, shall we? So first of all, I want to start off by saying that when, I, when I'm talking about the gaming mice part, I'm talking about actual gaming mice and not the gaming mouse that I was showing in my last video, which was just extravagant design and RGB. And that was it for its features. And that was supposedly making it gaming. Those features do not make a gaming mouse. Now the difference between an actual gaming mouse and a something like a desktop mouse, that's what I'll call it from now on, meaning a non-gaming mouse, is in three things. The sensor, the buttons, and the additional features that you might get. Let's look at the buttons first. In a gaming mouse, you can have all sorts of configurations for the buttons, and you can have very, very varied amounts of buttons. But in every single mouse, the point of those buttons is the same. And that is to do whatever you need it to do. In a gaming mouse, you can have all sorts of variations for the different kinds of button layouts, but they all have a simple sole purpose. To give you the ability to do more by moving your fingers and hands less from where they need to be. So whether you're playing something like a first person shooter or a third person action game, and your fingers on the keyboard need to be on WAST, the more time they spend on that WAST and the less time you need to go looking for other keys to press, the better. So when you have them, when you have additional things attached to the mouse, you can just simply use your thumb, for example, to do those and you don't need to move your hands from where they need to be. Or if you're playing like League, well, you're holding that QWER and you don't want to move it away from there so you can react quickly. But just like a few buttons being the starting point, but with gaming mouse, they can go all the way to something like MMO mice where you can have a whole numpad just on your thumb alone. The role of the extra buttons on a desktop mouse is different though. Most of the time you will see something like just the thumb one and thumb two buttons, which are mostly meant for something like going back and forth in a browser or undo and redo in something like a word or a word editor or document editor or video editor. Reason there's less control required in a desktop mouse is because there's there are less situations where you need to be able to react quickly when you're editing a document. So there is no set position where your keyboard hand needs to be. Therefore keyboard shortcuts are more prevalent and less control is needed in the mouse. Another difference is connectivity. A significant majority of desktop mice are in fact wireless. This is entirely due to the flexibility of wireless. Not only does wirelessness give you the ability to have your desk less cluttered by wires, but a lot of mice are being connected to TVs so that, of course, in that case, a wire would simply be a nuisance. Probably most of all, a lot of these desktop mice type of things are going with laptops. And when you're packing stuff and unpacking stuff and bringing them out and in constantly, having to reconnect and disconnect and handle the wires in that bundle is just a hassle that you don't get when you have something wireless. Gaming mice on the other hand are only recently, in the past few years, started making their move toward wireless. There was a stigma for the longest time that a wireless connection in a gaming mouse means that you get more input latency. But thanks to the strides made in the wirelessness technologies, that is pretty much busted for the most part these days. Something like the Logitech G900 or the G502 Lightspeed all support connections that are completely one millisecond, completely wireless. So 
while it is starting to become more commonplace and more affordable, wirelessness is still a luxury in, in gaming mice. It is not the standard. But then again, most gaming stations are stationary, so in that sort of a situation, having a wire is not that big of a deal. And, it's, and on top of that, there are these things called gaming bungees or mouse bungees or different brands use different names. But basically there's a cable holder so that, you know, the cable isn't going all around the desk while you're moving your mouse around. But the biggest difference between a desktop mouse and a gaming mouse is in the sensor. A gaming mouse is unsurprisingly focused on the sensor, so it can give you the most accurate movement that you need, that you can get. The sensor is most often measured in four areas. First one being the polling rate, how often the mouse update its, updates its location to the computer. Second one being max speed, how fast the, well, this is pretty straightforward, how fast the mouse can move while still being able to track precisely. This is usually measured in IPS, which is inches per second. Third one being max acceleration. Once again, pretty straightforward. This is measured in Gs. And the last one being DPI, which is dots per inch. So this is most of the time the one that you can have control over and you can change between different DPIs. DPI just generally means dots per inch. The higher the DPI, the more dots on the screen, the cursor moves per inch of movement in the mouse. If, if that didn't make sense, go back and try to listen to that a few more times. And maybe, maybe, maybe you can make sense of my words. Now gaming mice require good sensors to give you an accurate result on the screen per the movement that you make on the mouse. This is usually not that big of a deal in desktop mice. With desktop mice, you rarely need to make similar big, quick movements when you're doing normal things. The less your hand has to move, the more pleasant the mousing experience. Is that a word? Can we just agree that mousing is now a word? That is why using a cheap or even a high-end desktop mouse will almost always lose in gaming performance to even a mid-tier gaming mouse because there's a complete different focus on the mouse. Usually this comes down to the sensor, so the max speed of the mouse might not be that high or the polling rate will be pretty low, so it doesn't track that well. And that is the reason why using something like a desktop mouse for gaming will might give you the idea that you're not that great in a game, even though it's down to the mouse. But due to not many people knowing that there's a difference between the categories, which is stark, a lot of people might think that they're bad at a game because they're using a mouse that is not designed for gaming and is simply not keeping up. But do keep in mind that getting a gaming mouse won't help you if you're just bad at a game. You will still be bad at a game, but just with a nice mouse now. Lastly, there is a vast difference between the additional features that you might get when you give a bit more money in the mice department in both categories. In gaming mice this usually means more a better performance from the mouse and potentially more buttons, more well wirelessness is something that hikes up the price or the mouse might be covered in holes so to bring the overall weight down so it's even faster to move around, or something like a DPI shift button that allows you to change your DPI from low to high or high to low, depending on a situation in a game. Like if you're playing a first person shooter and you start sniping, you might press that button to bring your DPI lower so your aiming is even more accurate. But of course, this is all not to mention special, completely specialized things like being able to change the whole side or the button layout of the mouse on the fly. On desktop mice, the features are more surrounded in productivity. So you might have something like the ability to connect the mouse to several computers at once, 
and some mice even have onboard memory so you can simply transfer files texts numbers from one pc to another just by using the mouse without those pcs being even connected or then you might have something like horizontal scrolls that might not be that useful in gaming but in something like a video editor is absolutely fantastic so that's all cool and dandy that's the those are the biggest differences between gaming and desktop mice this all applies to something like mid-tier upward because when we go to the extreme budget categories things will get really muddled you can have gaming mice that have decent sensors or you might have something like the rava that i showed in my last video that has a terrible sensor which is even worse for gaming than my logitech m185 which is a mouse that came in a 30 euro keyboard mouse bundle package so when we're talking about that extreme budget tier your results may vary significantly well actually most of the desktop mice for desktop use will most likely be just fine if just low build quality but the gaming mice in like 10 to maybe 20 euro area are extremely sketchy so i personally definitely recommend going a bit further to something like 30 euros 30 dollars and above to get something that actually works surely well that's about it for this time thank you so much for watching leave a like if you liked the video or if you perhaps learned anything and consider subscribing to the channel if you feel like you want to it's free but you know not the cops or anything now as always i'm lo-fi and i will see you guys next time peace